Hi everyone, welcome back to this course on Introduction to Material Science and Engineering offered by Edipedia World. The previous two introductory lectures highlighted the scope and the basic regime in which material science and engineering is very important. In today's lecture, we'll see the classification of materials, that is, what are the different categories under which a given material can be put to and what are their basic properties and differences amongst each other. Here initially let me jot down all the different categories of materials. The first is metals. As you might know a majority of the elements in the periodic table fall under the category of metals. Right? And by metal I do not mean just metal as in iron or magnesium. This also refers to the alloys associated with the metal. So steel will also be put under the metal category. Then we have something known as ceramics. Ceramics by the day to day colloquial language you might be knowing the clay potteries and those things are ceramics. But in fact the materials which fall under the ceramic category are much more diverse group. We'll see about that. Then what we know as polymers. The most uh, prominent one are the polythenes and plastics which is used to carry day-to-day -day items though that is environmentally not friendly so it's not advised to do so. Then we have what is known as composite materials, something known as semiconductors and biomaterials. So the initial four of them, the metal, ceramic, polymer and composite are the most broad categorization of the materials. Semiconductor kind of fits into this scope so are the biomaterials so basically these things are a subgroup let's say but mainly we have what is known as metal ceramic polymer composite now let us pick each of them one by one and see to begin with metals the most uh, prominent property of metal is that the electrons in a metal are non-localized that is when we will discuss about the atomic arrangement of electrons, protons and neutrons, we will see that the metals have what is known as non-localized electrons that is the outer valence electrons do not belong to individual atom rather it belongs to the whole bulk of the material and this non-localized electron kind of gives the properties to the material. So influences the properties then we have what is known as good conductor since there is non-localized electron those electrons are free to carry charge thereby conduct electricity that is a trademark property of metals metals normally have a lustrous appearance that is they are more on the shiny side these four are very basic properties there are many more properties of metals which we will explore in details in further chapters but to give you a taste these are kind of the properties then Ceramics. Ceramics are mainly oxides, nitrites and carbides. So if you have some oxides, zirconium, diboride, borides are also uh, ceramics or carbide. Those things are, fall under the ceramic category. Then we have insulating properties. So ceramics are normally non-conductors or they are very good insulators. Thereby a lot of application of ceramics is in the field where there need to be insulation from electricity or insulation from heat. But there is also extremely important conducting properties under different circumstances and those things we will see in details later. Ceramics are hard and brittle. They have a very high hardness and they break easily. That is if you drop a ceramic material the chances are high that it will break immediately. Next up let's discuss about polymers. Polymers are mainly made up of, of organic molecules. Some of the examples of polymer can be rubber and plastic. These are day to day examples which you encounter every day. But the extent to which polymers are being used is much much more broader than just rubber and plastic. Polymers are normally very large changed molecules. That is the molecules are not small molecules, they are quite large and that makes the molecules bulky. They have a very high molecular weight. And polymers are normally low density materials. 
that is they are not very compact the molecules are not compactly packed thereby their density is low and polymers mostly are flexible materials need not be the case always but generally speaking they are on the flexible side compared to ceramic materials or metals next let us see what are composite materials till now what we have seen is that all the three metals ceramics and polymers are made out of one type of material right but composites are made of more than one material they might have two metals let's say or they might have a metal and a ceramic let's say they might have a metal and a polymer or any combination thereof it may have more than two material too now what is the reason of using more than one material suppose you have one material which has very high strength and you have another material which is quite flexible but the first material is not flexible and second material is does not have a high strength so what you can do is you can combine the two materials and get a moderately good flexibility while retaining a moderately good strength so depending on the application you can find combinations of materials which gives you the relevant properties you need for the application that is the power that composite material provides us with so basically composite materials provide best property of constituent material and one simple example is concrete that is used for house building that has gravel sand cement and water so there are different materials you see and those each material brings a inherent property with itself and they combine together to give our required application that is the binding property of the whole concrete system so now we have seen the four broad classifications of materials let us jump into the two kind of sub categories of material one is semiconductor as the name suggests and as you might have studied in your previous classes a semiconductor is a material which has intermediate conductivity that is they are not as good a conductor as metals but they are not a insulator and this semiconductivity of the material has interesting applications especially in the integrated chip system or the electronic area you need to control the amount of conduction that takes place and semiconductors give you precisely that control how can you control a material which is a semiconductor let's say for example silicon has a certain conductivity but by something what is known as doping that is adding different element to the silicon base in very controlled amount can help you fine tune the amount of conductivity you want to provide in the material so semiconductors are basically very good at adjusting the amount of conductivity based on the amount of additional element you dope into that material that gives you a fine tuned way to control conductivity and uh, obviously this has brought about the integrated chip revolution which is kind of the modern revolution in the sense that all the electronic gadgets you see today is due to this semiconductor industry finally let us discuss briefly about biomaterials now what are biomaterials exact definition is that these are materials which are compatible with body mainly in our case with the human body let's say there is a need for knee surgery replacement of the knee or the hip bone so when you are inserting something into the body like the hip joint that new material introduced to the body should be biocompatible or the or it should be compatible with your body else it will degrade inside the body and that will lead to a very tragic condition inside the body which can eventually lead to even death so such materials which are compatible with the body and which can be placed inside the body safely are known as biomaterials this has a wide application as you can think in the medical area mainly used as in implants as i explained and speaking about it the it can be any of the above five or mainly the four categories that is metal ceramic polymer or composite 
not necessarily a semiconductor because this itself falls under a combination of these categories right so this gives you a broad picture about what are the different kinds of materials and what can we expect from this course at large specifically speaking this particular introductory course will mainly focus on metals and metal alloys but will have discussions on ceramics composite and polymer too because they are interesting topics but they in themselves are much much wider topics and complete courses can be offered on each of them individually with this classification let's see what are the future demands in the area of material science and engineering till now what we have seen we have seen the history about material science and engineering how did it come about into being what are the present applications of it and then we saw different kinds of material now what is the future of it one very simple thing which you can think on your own self is that sophisticated materials while maintaining the environment what do i mean by this we need to keep on coming with new materials with ever increasing demand of new applications ever increasing demand in terms of strength or particular electrical application or magnetic application we need to keep coming up with new and better materials so that is what sophisticated material means and maintaining environment global climate change is a very important thing that needs to be taken into consideration and we need to work towards maintaining the environment while making our own life better so we need to create the materials in such a way that the materials in itself do not harm the environment or while manufacturing the material the environment is harmed as less as possible next the nuclear revolution needs new materials what is the nuclear revolution till date our source of energy is mainly from the coal industry there are renewable sources of energy being generated and used of late with uh, knowledge about how much harm coal does to the environment burning coal and stuff but still one of the most important area which is not yet tapped into is the nuclear regime it's being used but not to its full extent so the nuclear revolution needs to take place that's a source of infinitely large amount of energy but it's a very risky deal so new and sophisticated materials which can withstand very harsh conditions and which can protect us from nuclear radiations such things needs to be come up with so that is a challenging field which is one of the futures of material science and engineering you need to bring about ingenious noble ideas to deal with this problem then the transportation sector the whole transportation sector is a game where you are trying to reduce the weight thereby increasing the efficiency of the vehicles that is one of the most important research area therefore weight reduction is one of the most prominent ideas that we need to be working on and in fact a lot of research is going on in that field so this is actually a very well known field which is already being ex explored into but which has a lot of future prospect to solar technology as i mentioned about the energy we keep coming back to energy why because that is a direct relevance with the climate change so coming to solar technology Uh, solar technology is already being put to use there are a lot of things that are running on day to day uh, scale using the solar technology but uh, do you know what is the main problem with solar technology the main problem is that the efficiency of the materials which we have at present to capture the solar radiations is very low it's in the range of around 20% so we are actually not utilizing the solar energy as much as we can we need to find new materials and new ways to harness the efficiency much higher than 20% or even a little higher than 20% that is also going to give a lot of 
increase in the energy input through the solar technologies. Work needs to be done in that field. Then coming back to the metals point, metal extraction methods. Metals normally except for the noble metals do not lie around in the earth's crust, right? You need to dig out the ore and then put it through extraction processes and then the metal is obtained from it. But this is a highly energy intensive property. A lot of energy goes into extraction of metals or different materials. Work needs to be done in finding methods which reduces the amount of energy required. And finally, new material development. What I mean is that there is need of materials which we even do not know what kind of material. Future will demand new things to be developed and accordingly new materials need to be developed. So this is the zone of uncertainty that is there in the material science and engineering domain. But that is the exciting thing about it that you get to do things which you do not even know today. So to sum up the future demands as you can see is mainly focused on the energy sector directly or indirectly. In addition to that, new and sophisticated material development is also a broad field where the future of materials engineering lies. This brings us to a more or less closing of the introductory set of lectures. Next, we'll start with the atomic structure. This is the basic chemistry 101, but we need to understand it well for our future chapters we'll discuss about the atomic structure we'll discuss about electrons in atoms the different models the Bohr model that was there and then the wave mechanical model which came about later and then we'll touch concept of periodic table and how metals and elements are arranged in it so hopefully today's lecture gave you an understanding about the different categories of material and what the future demands us and uh, where the future of material science and engineering lie. So hopefully you liked it and uh, I have grabbed your attention to follow up with the next lectures. Till the next lecture, have a great day. Goodbye.